I can't imagine why you'd ever want to run Microsoft Recall. To me, this just looks like more spyware from Microsoft, but perhaps you found it useful. Please put in the comments below. To me, this just looks like spyware. Here I've got a Microsoft Copilot Plus PC laptop, ARM processor. This is supposed to be the future and it supports Microsoft Recall, but I saw something really interesting on the register recently. This is from 1st of August, 2025, tested Microsoft Recall can still capture credit cards and passwords, a treasure trove for crooks. Our tests have shown there are ways to get around the promised security improvements. I thought, well, this can't be that bad until I actually tested it. And in my tests, this is just awful. And I'm gonna take you through various tests to show you how bad this is. The registers also put this out recently on the 19th of September. Microsoft insists Copilot plus PCs are empowering the future. Reality disagrees. Latest marketing blitz for a solution seeking a problem and a killer app. Okay, so on the 27th of September, 2024, David Weston, Corporate Vice President, Enterprise and OS Security at Microsoft says, update on recall security and privacy architecture. They're saying as AI becomes more integral to Windows, Windows is doing more with AI on the edge with the power of a 40 plus tops neural processing unit on Copilot plus PCs. This enables lower latency, better battery life for AI intensive tasks, use of AI experiences without an internet connection and better privacy by retaining information locally. Okay, so a lot of sales stuff here. The first thing they say is the user's always in control. Recall is an opt-in experience. This video is sponsored by Delete Me. I often talk about OSINT on this channel and interview OSINT experts. They show us how easy it is to find information about you online. They can even find out where you live and often can find very personal information about you and your family. People search websites, publish PII, your addresses, your phone numbers, even information about your relatives. Now I've signed up to delete me to remove my personal information from a lot of data broker websites. Now when I signed up, I completed my profile and got a privacy report showing what information they found about me and what was removed. From there, Delete Me continues submitting removals and monitoring hundreds of websites all the time with human privacy advisors to help you for edge cases. Now, Delete Me won't make you invisible online or 100% anonymous, but it helps reduce your exposure to identity theft, doxing, and harassment. Now, you can get 20% off Delete Me's consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com forward slash Bumble and use promo code Bumble at checkout or use the QR code on screen to get your discount. Now, this is a brand new laptop, which I reset before running some of these tests. I didn't uninstall Recall or a bunch of other software. I simply upgraded it and guess what, this appeared. So suddenly I had this recall option and I was kind of nudged to enable recall. So if I run that now, notice it opened up and I'm told I couldn't sign in with Windows Hello. To use recall, try signing in again. But I want you to notice something, please. I am remotely controlling this laptop from my Mac. So I am using VNC to remotely control this laptop. And guess what? I can open up a recall here and see what it's doing. So if I click open recall, notice I've taped this up. We are told that recall encrypts all the data and the keys are protected using Windows Hello enhanced sign-in identity. That means that other users cannot access these keys and thus cannot decrypt the information. Windows Hello enhanced sign-in security biometric credentials protect your privacy and actively authenticate you. But notice here, I can log in using a simple pin. I'm not using biometric here. I have created a pin which gives me access to recall remotely. I'm not local, this is remote. They say recall currently supports pin as a fallback method only after recall is configured. And this is to avoid data loss if a secure sensor is damaged. So my sensors are blocked here. So it's falling back to a pin, but I actually was able to set this up without Face ID. I simply used a book for face recognition, which I'll show in a separate video. What I can do now is simply put my face in and notice it's recognizing the book. And there you go, face ID is set up, but I simply used an image from a book for the facial recognition. So the first point I'm trying to make here is I can access this remotely. I don't need biometric data. If the user set up a pin, like in this example, recall can be accessed remotely. In the register tests, they used TeamViewer. 
So they say lack of physical access to the PC with the recall data is not a blocker either. I installed free TeamViewer remote desktop software on the Copilot plus laptop and was able to view my entire recall history from a second computer. When it asked for a face, I just gave it my pin instead. And that's exactly what I'm doing here, except I'm using VNC here. Now just think about this. You may be aware that recall is a bad idea, but what about your mother, your grandmother, other family members who are not as technically savvy as you are? There are so many examples of scammers getting older people to install TeamViewer or some other remote desktop software and then remotely controlling their computer. Now just imagine that they managed to do, to do this and got the person to put a pin on recall. I am simply gonna search now for password in recall. Remember, I'm doing this remotely. I'm not touching that laptop at all. And guess what? Recall, in this example, has captured my password on a website and I can simply copy that. This is the BBC. This is a live website. I have copied that password. This is obviously a test password, but notice here in Notepad, we have an email address. We have a password, there's my password. And we have credit card information displayed right here. Recall has captured all of this information. If a hacker gets access to this data, notice I'm again remotely controlling their computer. If I ran malware in here and managed to get your password to log into this, I could search for all kinds of things. So let's say again, username. I can see username here. We were able to capture API keys using this. And this is even worse. This is showing my password manager, in this case, ProtonPass, with my username and password and social security number in a text document. Here's an example of it capturing my username on the BBC. The register said, in another instance, I had a photo of my passport visible on screen and recall correctly avoided it. However, when that photo was partially covered by another window, recall took the screenshot. So your passport information could be found, other confidential information. When the register contacted Microsoft about this, they declined to comment. To be fair, they say Microsoft doesn't claim that recall sensitive data fault is perfect. They say they'll continue to improve this. As I said earlier, I was able to register this face using this book on this laptop for facial recognition. If your mother or grandmother or someone else has a laptop with this feature on, they're probably going to enable a password for backup. And that password could be hacked. Or a scammer could simply speak to them on the phone, like they do every day. You see all these videos on YouTube, and they get that person to give them the password so that they can access this history. Can you imagine what hackers are gonna get access to, or scammers are gonna be get access to, once they have access to recall with all this information? As simple as that for me to find passwords in recall. The register also talks about the fact that these PCs are not doing well. People do not think they good. Businesses don't care about exclusive features such as recall, yet Microsoft likes to try, try and try again to convince customers it knows best. Are you sure you trust Microsoft with this? In its latest promotional post, Microsoft lists several applications that have been ported to Windows and ARM architecture and touts the breakthrough performance of Copilot plus PCs. I don't know, I'm not prepared to give up my privacy to run this, to have a quieter computer, faster computer. I'm not gonna give up my privacy for that and run software like this, it's mad. Now before people get angry, I know that there are two settings in recall. In recall, you can go to the settings here and you can get it to filter sensitive information, but it's not perfect. In my tests on this laptop, I found that if I enable this option, so filter sensitive information, all web browsing traffic is lost. It basically just doesn't capture any web browsers. And that kind of defeats the whole point of using recall, don't you think? Because most of us are using our browsers. Most traffic goes through browsers, but in my example, it kind of just hit everything. In tests by David on my team, he did this on an x86 computer. It was capturing the web browser, but filtering out sensitive data, but not always doing it successfully. The register says, it has a filter that's supposed to prevent it from screenshotting sensitive information like credit card numbers that they did shows that it still fails in many cases, creating a potential treasure trove for thieves. In my tests as well, when that's enabled, I can still capture passwords in Notepad. Register had the same situation. So they said it worked when I created a text file with the words username and password in it. However, when I just listed usernames and passwords in the text file without those identifiers, it captured the screen. 
So here's their example. Here we can see usernames and passwords. In other tests that we've done, it filtered it out, but at other times didn't. Depends if you give it identifiers. Like as an example, a home address was captured unless you made it obvious. So again, in my example, email, password, credit card details is captured. Social security numbers are captured. So I'll do a search for password again. Here we've got password. This is in LibreOffice. In the background here, you can see password and username captured. So you can just imagine a hacker or a scammer getting hold of this. Here's another example, information captured. So I wouldn't trust that it's going to always filter out sensitive information. So we've done multiple tests and the registered multiple tests. And they said things like, when I logged into PayPal, recall captured the screen login showing my username, but not my password. It correctly avoided screenshotting the account page, which showed my transactions. But if a bad actor had my username, that's some of the information they would need to get in. So in my experience and my tests on this laptop, if I enable this option, basically it didn't capture anything on the uh, web browsers. It, it kind of didn't work. On our x86 test, it did work, but it was still capturing sensitive information at times. Now, another concern here is we don't know, based on our tests of this, whether it captures the information and then removes the screenshots if it sees that it's sensitive information. It's obviously reading what you're doing. So Microsoft say that it's not using key logging, so it's not logging your keystrokes, but it is capturing what it sees and then uses AI to obviously understand what's going on and then can decide to not save that screenshot or remove it. And just think about what's happened in the EU. They wanted to scan your private messages and your photos. The chat proposal would mandate scanning of all private digital communications, including encrypted messages and photos. This threatens the fundamental privacy rights and digital security for all EU citizens. Now, fortunately, Germany and Luxembourg were against this massive surveillance and breaking of encryption. So it hasn't passed yet. But notice the hypocrisy of these politicians. EU politicians exempt themselves from the surveillance under professional secrecy rules. They get privacy. You and your family do not demand fairness. This is from the fight chat control that EU website. If recall is implemented and actually works, governments could decide that you need to have this enabled so that they can scan all your messages. This is basically client side scanning spyware on your computer, seeing everything that you type, seeing everything that you're doing, and then could report that to authorities if they don't like what you're doing or saying on your own computer. So think about it, you are paying for a device. I didn't get this for free, I had to buy this laptop. I'm paying for this device with this wonderful operating system running spyware, and they're gonna monitor me 24 seven if they implement this chat control stuff in the EU. And think about it, if it comes to the EU, how long will it be before it comes to your country where you are? Very scary times. So I think you need to warn your family about this. You don't want to enable recall at all. Now, Microsoft say that you are in control of your privacy, but we know the amount of spyware already on Microsoft Windows. Have a look at my previous video, which I've linked below, where I show you how to use tools to remove some of the spyware on Microsoft Windows. They are spying on you already. Huge amounts of telemetry are being captured about what you do on your computer. And I think this is just taking it a step further in the very worst possible direction. I don't believe that Microsoft cares about your privacy when they're designing software like this that gives politicians or governments this kind of option where they can check all your messages, all your private data. Now. Microsoft will probably say that you need to add your app to filter. So you would have to specify which apps you want to filter or which websites you want to filter. You're going to want to filter sensitive information here. So you're going to want to enable that to stop sensitive information being filtered. But in our tests, it didn't work properly on this computer. This is an ARM computer. Notice Snapdragon CPU. We've tested on x86 as well. Our results varied. Didn't work so well depending on which application was being used. So the register has always has a funny take on things. They say Microsoft says that Copilot plus PCs mark a significant moment for the industry. This is undoubtedly true for AI PC makers. It's not so much a benefit to users as it is to the bottom line of the hardware brands and Microsoft itself. HP, for example, stated that AI PCs now account for a quarter of its sales with their higher price tags contributing to revenue growth. Dell and Intel are 
in a similar way, pushing AI-ready technology on customers. So I doubt this is for your benefit. It's for their benefit. And just think about what you're losing from a privacy point of view running this kind of nonsense. Now, Microsoft talks about this VBS enclaves and how it's so secure, et cetera, et cetera. And what does the register say? It's also possible that the VBS enclave and encryption are not infallible, like everything in life. Attackers have previously exploited side channel flaws in VBS and Hyper-V to infer secrets from enclaves unless hyper-threading is disabled or fully patched. This is from Huntress. So administrators must apply all mitigations promptly and patch recall as soon as possible because it's inevitable that it'll become vulnerable to attacks over the years, which we know because it's been exploited over time in the past. So he says that recall is an unnecessary security and privacy risk for not that much usability gain. And I would very much agree with that. So privacy risk, even worse for vulnerable users. This is what I started with. Brave, as an example, is blocking recall by default, not just on private tabs. So recall will not snapshot tabs that are private, but Brave is just gonna mark everything as private so that it doesn't get snapshotted. I would highly recommend that you use Brave. Get your grandparents, your parents to use Brave. If they're not technically savvy, get them to use Brave. It works really well. Stops a lot of nonsense. I would use Brave. But what are your thoughts? Convince me that I'm wrong about this. But to me, this is a terrible idea. And I would agree with the Huntress folks, John Hammond, who I've interviewed before a few times. And I would believe what these guys tell me, including that recall is an unnecessary security and privacy risk that doesn't give you much gain. I agree with that. What do you think? For me, my, my recommendation is don't buy a laptop like this. Don't buy this. Don't even run Windows. Look at running Linux. I get a lot of hate if I say this, but Mac is better than Windows, much better at security. But I know a lot of people hate it when I say that. Ultimate is to use Linux, but that's perhaps not for everyone. I doubt your mother or grandmother is going to want to use a Linux computer, but perhaps I'm wrong. If you can convince them to use Linux, great. And you lock Linux down and you make sure that it's secure. That's great. Linux gives you great power, but with great power comes great responsibility. 